All right, so I'm excited to say that the Canon 70D has finally arrived. I've been anticipating now this for quite a while and uh, refreshing the FedEx tracking page a uh, ridiculous amount. So I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm not a big fan of the unboxing where there's not much going on other than the stuff being taken out. So I'm going to be taking the stuff out of the box, talk about what's in it. But as I do that, I'm also going to be highlighting some key features of the Canon 70D. Uh, what I'll be looking for and creating in future videos to talk about uh, different features of the 70D, how it compares to other cameras, um, and I'll be talking about some of that as we go through. So I'm going to stop blabbing and just start um, opening this up. So obviously we have our warranty, our solutions disc that has the DPP utility, which is kind of a free Lightroom light, L-I-T-E version, um, and the manuals. Spanish and English in this part of the world. Uh, I highly recommend that you go find the PDF of the manual. Put it in Dropbox and then it's immediately available on all of your devices. What? You don't use Dropbox? You really should use Dropbox. Um, but that's a great way to always have your manual with you because then you can open it up on your phone um, or otherwise. Alright, here is the 70D itself in its little fiber bag. I want to pull that out right there. So, um, you know, you immediately notice, I've been holding the, five, the T5i a lot lately, it is a little bit more robust feeling and there's a little bit more to hold. I'm going to kind of push this forward, set that right there. We have the T5i here with the 18 to 135 on it as well. Actually, let's just get the rest that's in here. Your standard USB cable, the strap, neck strap, uh, again, not a huge fan of the standard neck straps. Right at this very moment, I'm doing a giveaway for a black rapid strap. The Canon LPE6 battery. This is the, right, is that the LPE6? Um, yes. And this is the same battery that's used in the 60D and 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III. And what's really nice is because I own those cameras already, the 5Ds, um, I don't have to wait for it to charge because I have a charged battery right here already. The Canon charger, and it's really nice on these higher end cameras that they include the ones that have the flip up plug. That's a great improvement over those other ones that come with a cord. And that's it. I got this body only because I already own the lenses that it comes with and I own other lenses. So let's just put that there out of the way. Move this right here. So let's talk quickly about the highlights of this camera and I'll set it here right next to the T5i as we're looking at them. Um, we got 20 megapixel sensor, so we're finally seeing a new sensor from Canon, uh, and I'm saying that with a capital F, finally. The 18 megapixel sensor had been used now, T2i, T3i, T4i, T5i, and 60D, and the 7D. So it had been used for quite some time, several years, uh, and was starting to show its age. It's a good sensor, but it really is starting to show its age. So moving up to the 20 megapixel. We don't care that it's more megapixels. What we care and what we are going to be interested to see is its low light performance, both JPEG and RAW. And I'll be comparing it against the T5i with the older sensor, uh, against the 60D with the older sensor as well. Uh, D7100 is also a really interesting comparison. Those two, these two cameras, the 70D and the D7100 uh, from Nikon and Canon are very similar on paper. Um, and so we wanna see how they perform in the real world. We also have, you know, um, seven frames per second continuous shooting. So fairly significant uh, increase um, over the 60D and over the T5i. I shouldn't say, you know, actually 60D, I think it was almost seven frames per second. So not a huge, huge difference. Um, we have a silent shutter mode in here as well. The styling on the back is, you know, a blending. It's, this camera sits between the T5i or the Entry Rebel series and your higher end, um, and it blends those very nicely. It's gonna be interesting to see how the autofocus compares to the existing 7D. It's borrowing a lot of technology from the 7D, which is an older camera as well, built like a tank, but with a really uh, sharp focusing engine in there, and it does a really nice job. Um, other things that I'm really curious to try, I haven't yet, is Canon's built-in Wi-Fi. You have apps for your Android or iOS devices so you can pull images directly off there. It can also as, act as a remote trigger 
Uh, I've seen the reviews are mostly positive of that. Similar to the Nikon side, you do have to have that dongle on the Nikon side, but uh, you know the common complaint is in both cases it's fairly limiting. Probably the big headline feature though of this camera is for video folks is that dual pixel technology which is going to allow smooth and quick autofocusing during video. So we'll be looking for that. How does it compare to the T5i? How does it compare with the STM lens versus a non-STM lens? Now you remember if you're shooting with a T5i or T4i, you have to have an STM lens on to get continuous, silent, and smooth autofocus. I think over here, what they're saying is you can use any lens um, and it's going to do just as good a job. It won't be um, silent. You know, those other lenses are going to still make noises. There's no way they can stop a lens if it has gearing from making noises. But it is supposed to be much, much faster. Early reports are quite positive of that as well. Since I, I threw a battery in here, um, let's, let's put it on faster drive mode. And do we have even faster? Yes. That's quite fast. Now, it's not writing any of that to a card. Let's stick a card in there. And that's one of the other tests that I want to do. On paper, the D7100 from Nikon definitely seems to do uh, or looks better on paper. You've got the dual card slots. I do know I've tested the D7100. I have reviews of that up. Its low light performance is stellar. Uh, it has no anti-aliasing filter. Uh, images are gorgeous and sharp if you're using a lens other than the lenses it comes with. Um, and it's just a really nice camera. It's one fault uh, besides the aperture block that you can't change in live view. It's one fault is its buffer really isn't that impressive and it very quickly fills up if you're shooting raw images. It seems to be a problem with the the Nikon cameras right now, D5200 and the D7100 both suffer from this. They're producing these beautiful 24 megapixel images, but the buffers uh, inside the cameras, they've been a little stingy with those. And as a result, you really, you can get a couple a seconds of that fast full burst. And then after that, it's a good bit slower. So we're going to say menu, image quality. We're going to move it over to the raw. The other, you know, obviously differences here between these two cameras is the uh, top LCD screen allows for manual control in an easier fashion and you have dual dials. You have the dial on the front, similar to the T5i, and you have the dial on the back. And so now if I'm shooting full RAW and on the bottom I just want RAW, not RAW and JPEG. Now, I have put in a crummy card, but that is a nice solid buffer that was in there. I got a lot of shots at the beginning, but it's going to be a little while before. One of the tests that I've done with the other cameras is how many shots can you get on the different cards? How fast is the write speed and the read speed? So I'll be doing that test very soon. Now, let's take just a second and kind of tour the camera as it compares to the T5i, which is just sitting right here. Next week I'll have a comparison to the 60D. 60D obviously is a lot cheaper right now. Um, it's been out for quite a while, um, but you know, it's still a good value. So we're using that touch screen on the back. Um, and we've moved to, up here in this top left corner, we've moved to the higher end Canon uh, switch for video and still images. The dial has the locking button in it, as we see on the higher end cameras as well. On the side, you can see the size difference here between these two. Let me put the body cap on before the T5i sensor sucks in all of the dust. So similar, we have our mic, we have our um, remote HDMI. Uh, same on both. Missing from the 70D is a headphone jack for audio uh, monitoring audio in real time. Front of the cameras, a lot of similarities here. Uh, no real big differences other than the fact that the 70D is a little bit bigger. And of course on the top, big difference being the LCD screen. This is very similar to the 5D Mark II and Mark III with your buttons that let you get into all of those controls there as well. And in the back which I showed at the beginning as I started to talk about this but didn't really say much about it. 
is we have this kind of command dial back here that works as both a wheel um, and just inside of that is a push pad that lets you navigate through. And of course, as I said, this uh, menu is a touch screen right here. So it continues that very excellent touch screen and it is, uh, as I can see so far, a nice screen. All right, so that is the very beginning. It's a very first early look at the Canon 70D. Uh, I'll be coming back next week and uh, subsequent weeks for quite some time with lots more videos about the 70D. Leave a comment down below about what you are itching to see. What questions do you have about this camera? Um, this was really just an overview and I'm going to be answering them um, both in comment form and video form as we move forward. Thanks so much for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss any of these 70D videos. Thank you.